Good afternoon, everybody. It's so great to be back. I uh, tell you a little bit about myself. I had a couple people say, I know that guy from somewhere. I can't remember where. I had several people say that to me. I, I used to work for a hot farm regime back in 2006, 2007. I had the honor of serving down in uh, after Greg Hargett Hargit, Hargit did up at the legislative office down in Columbus. And so it's absolutely great to be back here amongst lots of friends and family and so many uh, familiar faces. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to be back chatting with you. Um, I'm a uh, Ohio Farmers member, you, Ohio Farmers Union member from Shelby County. My farm's just up at the very tip of Shelby County on the outlet Shelby County line. And my wife, like Roger was saying, and I own uh, Harvest Sun Farm. So at, when I left Ohio Farmers Union, I went back and was the village administrator in my hometown, New Knoxville. And we were able to buy part of uh, our family farm at that time. We were able to purchase 13 acres. And uh, so we started our own farming venture, um, which has been really exciting. So for about two years, we sold on a very small scale to local restaurants. And uh, just the last uh, a uh, year and a half, I've been going full time on the farm and have uh, been selling. We raise about uh, 30 different varieties of vegetables. We're certified organic, and we sell direct to consumers through two local two local farmers markets. Actually, we have one down in Columbus, and we just launched our first uh, CSA this week. It's a, called a Community Supported Agriculture Program, where where people pay up front, and then through the growing season, they'll get a basket of fresh produce every week throughout the growing year. So we just launched that. We just got our first few members the last few days, which we're really excited about, and uh, we're continuing to grow um, over the next year or so. Uh, then we, so we learned about the Beginning Farmers Institute. Uh, we're so lucky. Uh, Maria Miller from Ohio uh, launched this program on the national level. We were chatting with her about it, and she encouraged us to, uh, to apply. So uh, we decided to apply to the Institute, and were accepted. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what, what we experienced and uh, all the benefits we got out of it. So, so I'm going to cover a few different things. I'm going to just talk about you know, why our beginning farmers issue is so important for all of us, in the, both in the country and uh, for Farmers Union. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the unique challenges that beginning farmers face uh, as they start trying to start a farm business. Um, and I'm going to tell you about the institute itself, what we actually went and, and accomplished and did in our sessions. And then I'm going to talk about kind of some opportunities going forward around uh, beginning farmers' issues, uh, both nationally and uh, within the organization. So this is kind of, I hope some of you guys can see this in the back. This is a chart. It's a USDA data, and it shows the, the percentage of farmers over 65 um, from up to 2007 and between the ages of 25 and 35. So you can see the dark line is younger farmers and the, the, the light line is 65 and up for farmers. So you can see the trend of agriculture is just, it's, the line's almost vertical there. And so it's of concern both, you know, for us as a nation, who is going to grow our food and fiber um, and who's going to be there as the bedrock of our rural communities. Uh, the family farmer has always been that flywheel for the uh, local economies in our rural communities. And so who, who's going to be there to replace and be the next generation? Uh, another couple of little stats. And as you're watching the slideshow, the, the pictures in the background are of our farm, actually. Those are my, my sweet, potato plant, sweet, sweet pepper plants and then uh, eggplants on the left there. And then there's cauliflower and, and brassicas underneath that white row cover there. And then a couple other stats are just, you know, the average farmer is 57 years old, and then just from 2002 to 2007, we had a 20% increase in the number of farmers who were over 70. So why does that matter? Back to what I was talking about. It just matters because it's a family farm is such an important uh, centerpiece of our, our rural economy and agriculture, and we really need to think about how we can address this to make sure that the next generation can get into agriculture. Um, so some, what are some of the challenges that beginning farmers face? They're, they're somewhat unique. If, if you guys can go back and think about where, where you were first getting into agriculture or starting your farm business, um, you know, it's not necessarily easy, especially if you're coming from a non-farm family. So it really varies between geographic regions um, and your own personal experience. So people just accessing land, think about what land prices are right now and what it's like to try to get into farming if you don't have that in your family already. 
that's just the credit and capital. If you don't have the, if you're younger and you don't have the best, uh, haven't had a chance to establish a, a credit history, you know, and getting a bank to loan to you, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Another challenge I'm going to talk a little bit more about is transitioning to the next farm. That's this is a challenge, or the next generation. It's just a challenge in and of itself. And then everything involved in growing a business. You guys have you guys have years of experience out there, but all those items, whether it's your taxes, your insurance, uh, what kind of legal structure, all those questions are ones that need to be answered at the outset for a young person, and um, it's, it can be very daunting. And then you know your insurance. For me specifically. There's no crop insurance program that I can actually participate in because it, 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 it doesn't exist yet. And that's one of the things that I, I'm hoping to be able to remedy. And then access to health care insurance, which is a thing for, for all farmers. And then education and training. And that was specific to us. So we have friends who farm up in upstate New York in the Hudson Valley. They have all kinds of customers and all kinds of uh, uh, farming knowledge, but they can't access land because it's so expensive there. It's the exact opposite for us. We have access to not necessarily cheap farmland. It's still a high <coughs> price, but we are in the Knoxville, Ohio. We're kind of far, far away from urban areas. We have to develop and really work at, at creating our market, which is probably our biggest challenge. So, Big Union Out Farmers Institute. And if you kind of saw this as an opportunity, you know, what can we do to be bringing people together to address some of these issues? And Maria. Uh, worked really hard and, and created this, this new program called the Beginning Farmers Institute. And they took applications from all over the country and um, about 10 individuals were selected. Uh, I really want to thank Roger for helping give me a nudge on there, I think. Um, so uh, we were selected and it was a really interesting, diverse group. Um, we had lots of differences, but lots of similarities. Um, uh, and I'll just have Vaughn go to the next slide, I think. So this is the group, um, really interesting diverse group, and I think it really speaks to Farmers Union, but it was all different kinds of farmers, uh, but all with the same vision as family, uh, family farming as the keystone of American agriculture, uh, despite, you know, wherever they're from. So we had people who were from, there was a, 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 a Del person from Delaware who farms on uh, two urban bank lots and has a, a vegetable CSA and delivers her veggies on bicycles. There were two brothers who were ranchers in Montana who have uh, lots of steers and were educating us about the issues they have with wild horses on federal lands. We had dry land wheat farmers from Colorado. Um, we had somebody who grew uh, fruit trees up in Wisconsin. So it was just a very diverse group, but we all were facing all of the same kind of questions. What type of business structure? What kind of, what kind of tax issues are we going to run up against? There's commonalities across the board, no matter what you're trying to, to raise. So it was really nice to be able to have that connection and then also have the, the, the diversity. So we uh, met first in DC uh, in November, which was great. We uh, and if you brought in some of the lead people who are in Washington on some of the issues that we were, we, they asked us what we were interested in and uh, farm credit was one of the most important ones. Everybody was interested in how we do we access farm credit and uh, make sure we're eligible for everything and meeting all the rules. So we, that was somebody from Farm Credit. We spent a day, a part of a day down at USDA, meeting with all the folks who run all of the programs who were specific to what we were interested in, which was great. They did a great job of making us aware of some of the, the programs we might be able to access. And then uh, we had had a few. We had leadership from NFU come in and talk to us, and then we had uh, leadership training about not only the, the growing side and starting the business, but also how we could represent the organization well, how we could go and talk to people about the issues we were facing. And, and it also happened in conjunction with flying. So we got to go to DC in dark suits in September and walk around in the hot weather. Anybody who's ever been to, on a DC flying knows that's not necessarily great, but it was a, an absolutely wonderful experience. We went up to the hill and we talked to, to, to our, our elected leaders about why beginning farmers issues are important and also all of the other NFU priorities. We took those up as well. And then, uh, we just had a second session in November up in Minnesota, and we got a chance to talk to more farmers at that meeting, which was really great. We had a, a soybean farmer from southwestern Minnesota come in, and a dairy farmer from Wisconsin, and they really talked to us a lot about transitioning the farm. Uh, it seems to be a very common theme. We didn't run up into that as much as on, in my situation, but there were several people of the group who really struggled with you know, how we're going to take that business over from our parents. Um, and I know how many folks here had 
similar discussions with their own children about you know having the transition to their farm or their land. It's 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 can be a very difficult discussion and it can be an emotional one. Um, the the gentleman who was from the so the soybean girl from Minnesota, he uh, was just going through it himself with his sisters, trying to figure out how he could purchase their their parts of the farm so that his son could, son could continue to farm. And he told tore an absolute horrible story out of Nebraska about a he brought a news clipping about a, a situation where uh, four siblings had inherited the, the farm. I know they were quoting the sister, and they had gotten into a, a big legal discussion, and they had bring up about six hundred fifty thousand in legal dollars in legal fees trying to settle this estate. And so the, the guy who was interviewing her was like, "Well, you basically bled through all of your inheritance. Uh, do you regret that?" And she's like, "No, I don't regret it. None, none of my brothers got the land, and that's what I wanted." And it was just so he kind of said oh, that as a worst case scenario. But those are the kind of things that you know you can. If you have those discussions early, you can avoid. And he even brought in, he, he sat down with his sisters, he brought in a mediator, and they you know, just had a really nice formal discussion, and they were able to come to agree and so on. We also spent some time at CHS learning about cooperatives and the opportunities and importance of cooperatives, and uh, that was very educational. And then we also did a series of uh, on-farm visits uh, to uh, around Minnesota with a couple different folks doing uh, direct marketing opportunities and stopped by a farmer's market. Uh, we also got to spend some time with uh, MFU's legal counsel, which was very interesting. I hope they have him on retainer. Uh, he wasn't on the hour, but uh, it was interesting. We all had very good questions for him about uh, trying to design that best legal structure for a farm. Um, and then we're going to have one more session out in Omaha at the convention. There's going to be a breakout session, which I'm actually going to moderate. And we're going to bring in people from D.C. again, and we're going to talk about how we can work on policies to support beginning farmers. So anybody who has to, is headed to the convention, uh, please feel free to stop by. So what were some of the benefits of uh, Beginning Farmers Institute? And any, if, you, if any of you have children or grandchildren who might be interested in farming, I would highly recommend that they are working on the next, the next uh, version of uh, Beginning Farmers Institute. They're going to be taking applications here soon. Really got to pick the brains of experts, people who have done there. There's nothing yet is better than they're talking to somebody who's done it before you. Um, and we got to share experiences with our fellow uh, people who are doing and going through the exact same challenges that we are. It's so valuable that you're not the only one out there. It can be isolated at times when you're out there on the farm and you think you're the only one going through it. But those people, uh, when you can get them in a room with people who are going through the same thing, it's amazing how much you can learn. Just absolute, you know, just great business skills, learning to think about, you know, how do you get to that place of profitability. Uh, and then leadership and organizational skills. You know, I think it's also an opportunity for anything to begin to develop, you know, leaders along with our other youth programs within, within the organization and to be able to, you know, speak about the importance of family and farming. And there was a great media opportunities. Ron was kind enough to uh, send out some media when we were selected and we ended up in a couple of local papers that had the local TV station out to the exposed the farm, so we got a little bit of attention around our CSA, so it was a great opportunity there, too. And I, I really am tremendously thankful to Farmers Union, uh, both Ohio and, and National, for the opportunity. And uh, so there's, what are the opportunities? What can we do about this continuing issue and hopefully come up with some solutions? Uh, there's some great legislation in Congress that's been introduced by Senators Arkin and Representative Walls that goes through a whole laundry list of just tweaks within programs and also some new programs. Um, you know, there's existing programs that do help beginning farmers, but we can improve them, we can make them more accessible for people. And this legislation really does a good job of drawing on that and, and, and improving it. Um, so hopefully that might be included in the farm bill the next time around. Um, uh, some of the programs, uh, one really interesting one is like a microfinance um, program that would make a small loan amount available to somebody who is young and just trying to get into growing like a small agricultural business. It's, it's a great idea. And around the farm bill, I just mentioned that Secretary Vilsack has launched, you know, uh, uh, a goal of having 100,000 new farmers. And it's a very good goal and I hope that you know, we see some policies to support it. Um, so I would also mention again, for, uh, Beginning Farmers Institute is going to happen again this year. I just spoke to Marie about it yesterday. Uh, it sounds like they're, they're going ahead with it for uh, uh, season two. 
And then I also mentioned, I, was, I actually had the honor last week, I was out in Washington, D.C. serving on, for Ohio, I was on the National Policy Committee, which was a real honor and a real educational experience. You get to meet with a lot of, several people um, and just learn tons about agriculture and about their own farming experiences. And that was just a great experience. But I did work with the members on the committee. We, we have uh, added some language in the policy of national to elevate some of these beginning farmers' issues. And we also uh, uh, proposed a special order trying to just elevate it that you know, this is something that we want to focus on in our policy. So that will be uh, for consideration at the national convention as well. And then I also, again, like I said, we're going to have a breakout session on beginning farmers' issues. Um, so yeah, I would just encourage you again, if you have children or uh, grandchildren who might be interested in something like this, it was a super opportunity to uh, really help you know, set a vision for your business and hopefully go out and accomplish it. So I think that's pretty much it. Jeff said I might have had something to do with that. Uh, Maria Miller. Uh